Hi everybody, Dr. Larson here. Welcome to the video. We're talking about the favorite, the large intestine and 12 symptoms leading to its dysfunction. Now the large intestine is kind of that, that last bit where the food comes in. It does all its magic all the way through that last, roughly about five feet of that long tube that goes all the way through. And finally, you know, the, the waste products meet their maker on the way out. But this is the last the last piece of that puzzle, okay, we've got the liver and the pancreas and the stomach, we have the salivary glands, uh, we have the small intestine as well, gallbladder, in that digestive system. They all have to work together and we're going to talk about some of the symptoms of if you have large intestine dysfunction or colon dysfunction. Um, but again, as in all the videos I make, your body does not work in isolation. Every single organ system has to work together. There could be things happening that look like a large intestine dysfunction which are actually happening from the stomach farther up. So the stomach isn't doing the right thing, it's not sending the right kind of food down that tube and when it finally reaches the large intestine or liver or whatever it might be. So just make sure, always keep that uh, in mind. So number one, obviously a symptom of this is diarrhea. and more so is, okay, why is the body producing diarrhea? And one of the major reasons is there's an infection somewhere in there. So a lot of the people that I've seen, um, they have different microbes and things that are growing in them. Parasites, giardia, protozoans, things like that. I think the American Society of uh, Tropical Medicine and Hygiene states it's, it's like 80-85% of the population has parasites. And they're not commonly tested for. We don't have real good tests. I don't treat them, but I work with people and their body starts to remove these things. And we've, I've had all kinds of pictures sent to me of different things coming out of people. I know it's disgusting, but we're on a colon, large intestine video here. So again, we don't treat that per se um, because I'm not a medical doctor. I don't look at those things. I look at the function of the body, but we see all kinds of things come out and that infection goes away and all of a sudden their diarrhea clears up and these other issues clear up. So diarrhea is a symptom, but again, what's the cause? And like I'm, I'm mentioning, one of the common causes can be uh, a parasite infection. And again, it does not always, it's not always going to show up on a stool test. You think it would, but it, it doesn't. Um, they can go kind of undetected there. So uh, number two, high cholesterol. I talked about this on the liver video, if you've watched that, because the liver has to break down hormones and cholesterol and things in the body, and then the, then the rest of the body makes more of it. It makes new stuff, just like your skin. Your skin is always new. Your organs, cells are always new, right? Your body is making and breaking itself down all the time. Same with high cholesterol. If your colon is toxic, it's holding on to everything. So the cholesterol levels will naturally rise. And again, liver is part of that process as well. Um, diverticula, so these are what are small herniations inside the muscular wall of the large intestine. Diverticulitis, the itis on the end means it's inflamed. So inflamed diverticula. So now these, those herniations got inflamed. And you might have some procedure to help that out, but the bottom line too is you have to keep going deeper and say, well, why am I getting these and why are they inflamed? Because there are little pockets that kind of go through. Well, now it's stuff gets trapped in there. And now inflammation is very, very easily set in. So you, we, we need a roughage for one in our diets. The modern type societies, modern people that are watching things like YouTube and videos, um, we don't get enough roughage in our diet anymore. So we have to get that through to clear and clean that uh, large intestine. Number four, hemorrhoids. Um, Hemorrhoids are basically varicose veins of the rectum. And this happens a lot of times because, like it says here, the liver. So it's actually secondary to the liver adrenal gland. So the liver gets backed up, and that back pressure puts pressure on the, on the veins. So you get varicose veins, and you get hemorrhoids, which are varicose veins basically of the rectal area. So the liver gets real congested and, and clogged. The adrenals work with that as well because they have to hold water in the, in, the, in the large intestine when your adrenals are all fatigued out, which the vast majority of people that I've ever seen, adrenals are completely tanked. When they're fatigued out, you lose water in the colon. Now the stool becomes very, very hard and they become small little pebbles 
if you or someone you, you know or a child has like little like rabbit balls, that means that they're not holding water in their colon. So they've got an adrenal issue, whether it's chronic stress or something else that's bugging that system. But if you have a toxic bowel, that can also create a toxic liver because the liver's first job is to detoxify the bowel. So if you have a toxic colon, large intestine, it's kind of the same thing. Um, you have a toxic liver, which then leads to hemorrhoids. Okay. Uh, number five, gallstones. Again, it's a, it's a gallbladder issue, a liver congestion issue. But if you have a toxic large intestine, that's how the liver gets toxic as well. I just kind of mentioned that. Uh, back on the hemorrhoid one, same type of principle. So now the liver is getting all toxic, you have liver stones, and the gallbladder gets sludge in it as well, and over time develops stones as well, until you get to the point where you may or may not have to get that removed. I have a whole other video on gallbladder issues. Um, a lot of people watch that one, a lot of people contact me and email and, and uh, sign up for consults and things because of that one. And my, my standard answer is always yes, you may or may not have to get your gallbladder out. I, I don't know. There's ways to kind of clean that, but it, after a certain point, you you know, if the stones are big enough, you've got to get that taken out. But even if you do get it taken out, you have to go farther and figure out, well, why did I have gallstones to start with? It's not just a dysfunctional gallbladder. It's a toxic bowel. It's a liver that's all jammed up. It's whatever it might be. Uh, number five or six, appendicitis. So your appendix is on the very beginning of your large intestine. So if you can see here, I'm trying to look at the camera, um, your appendix is down in this region here. And then your, your large intestine comes up and across and down and then out. That's its loop. The appendix is right at the junction of where the small intestine meets the large intestine. It's called the cecum area. And there's a valve there as well called the ileocecal valve. And appendicitis occurs. Now again, same thing. If you, appendicitis means inflammation of the appendix, but if it's all infected and inflamed, that's an immune organ. It's a vestigial organ. Yes, we don't need it to survive, but like I tell people, you don't need your left arm either, but you kind of want it, right? It makes life easier. And having an appendix get inflamed means something's happening in the body. So it might be um, an infection of some kind, the body's struggling to clear something out, uh, again, who knows, parasites or something might be getting in there and the body is really, really struggling. So even if you do have your appendix out, which you might need, modern me you know, medicine, marvels, the moderns, the marvels of modern medicine um, and the amazing surgical techniques to get that out. You may need that. But again, you need to look farther and say, well, but why is my appendix getting inflamed? Why is it getting pus? Why, is it, why are these things happening? What's actually going on? Okay, you've got, you always have to look deeper. Uh, seven, elimination problems. So, you know, again, infections that are starting to brew in other areas of the body, uh, skin issues, so like the rashes and the eczema and the different things that happen on the skin. That's liver, uh, large intestine as well, small intestine, uh, because it's, the skin is an elimination organ. That's one of the things that it does, was trying to push things out the skin. So if you're not going through the bowel or the urine or whatever, this, in this case the bowel, it has to get rid of that waste somehow. Because you have the bowel, you have the breath, you have the urine, you have you know, sinuses, we have even earwax, we, women have menstrual cycles. Those are all ways of getting rid of acids and waste that the body produces. So uh, congestion again, sinus congestion. When I got rid of um, my, my infections that I had in my liver and kind of my colon and large intestine area, when I got rid of those, my 30 years of chronic sinus congestion was gone just like that. It was amazing because there was so much waste being built up and it was coming out my sinuses. My body was trying to purge the, 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 the waste product somehow, some way. And then we have excessive sweating. I have a story about this one. And it was in my probably first or second year of practice, and a young woman came in. She was maybe 24 or something like that, and she had a young daughter. Her and her husband came in, and they wanted to have a second child. But the medical doctors had said that she needed her thyroid gland irradiated because she had a diagnosis of Graves' 
disease. Graves is a hyperthyroid type autoimmune condition. So the lab test said that she had Graves disease and I saw it and sure enough she had Graves disease. And so she wanted to see if there's anything outside of that medical system, the hospitals and things that maybe someone like myself could help her with. And so she came in, I'm taking her history, asking her questions. And one thing that came up was that she had excessive sweating. And she had, I don't know why she wore a white shirt, but she had one. And you could just see the ring around. She just sweat like crazy. And the medical doctors wanted to give her a drug to stop sweating. And I asked her, I said, do you think that's a good idea? I mean, what do you think? Because sweating, again, is one way that your body gets rid of poison. It's an elimination system. So something is backing up. Something is having a problem somewhere that's pushing more of it through the sweat glands. So I'm doing more of the history and she goes, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't want to take a drug to stop sweating. And so I, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing on her form and it says that she has normal bowel movements. Okay. So I said, okay, so what's, what's normal? Well, she said, they're, they're normal. I said, well, how often do you go? And she said, every two weeks. So, I mean, she had a bowel movement literally twice a month, every two weeks. And the only reason why she went was because she purposely went to a popular fast food chain and had whatever, and that did the trick for her. So she was able to have a bowel movement from then on. Well, for, you know, for that day or whatever. So this woman was severely, severely clogged and just full of toxic debris. And no one was looking at that. I asked her, I said, did your medical doctors ever ask you questions about your bowel? And she said, no. She said, well, maybe one of them did. And she said, I told him it, I went every two weeks, whatever he asked about. And he, he said, well, how long had that been going on? And she, and she said, well, as long as I can remember. And he said, well, it must be normal for you then. No way is it normal for any human to go every two weeks. So... I did the work that I do, and we got her bowels moving within a week. Every single day she was going, within one week, a couple days, I think. And within either one month or two month, uh, or, or month two, she went back to the medical doctor, had her labs run again, and zero sign of Graves hyperthyroid. She had a toxic condition. And again, I didn't treat her for graves. I didn't treat her for anything. I just helped her body balance out what it was actually trying to do on its own, gave it some better solutions, adjustments, some supplements and things to help her body function better. And within a week, it was functioning much better on the bowel side. And within a month or two, I forget, all the signs of what she had before were completely gone. And she was thrilled, her husband was thrilled, and they went on to have another successful pregnancy and a young baby within the next year versus having to wait two years after you get your thyroid gland irradiated. At least that's what she had told me at the time uh, because of the you know, toxins and things that are in her body. They don't want that in the, in the young baby. So that's, that's what, that was their main driver. They wanted to come in and not have to go through that two-year period, nor did she want a very important gland to be basically destroyed and killed. So luckily, you know, she followed me and we did that, but long story, but that's, that's elimination. This is probably one of the, my, the most important parts of this whole process is that if, if your large intestine isn't working, you're going to get stuff in all random places. You're going to think that you have to slap cream and different things on your skin when it's actually your liver or your large intestine or something that's clogging up and it's pushing everything through the skin or you have excessive sweating or, or whatever on this list, science congestion like I had. So just remember that story. I mean, you can imagine, I can't imagine how I would feel if I had a bowel movement every two weeks. And I know, I mean, she was just ecstatic, felt amazing after that. And I think she even lost weight because there's so much impacted feces in there. So moving on, we have cystitis, which is a urinary tract infection, especially in women, because obviously the two holes, right, on the bottom and the perineum, um, are close together. So if you have a toxic bowel on one side, it can spill over on the other side. And you have more toxic stuff that has to be put through the urinary tract. 
if you're not eliminating it through the other way, right? The body has to get rid of it somehow, some way. So your urinary tract can tend to get infections. Uh, number nine, fever, weight loss, weakness. These types of things will occur with more of the inflammations. So again, itis means inflammation. Col is basically colon. So colitis is inflammation of the colon. Fever, weight loss, weakness occurs with that. So if you're experiencing some of those things, you know, that's a, kind of serious, right? You don't want to make sure to check everything out, of course, and go to the hospital and figure all it out, but then figure out why, if this is the case, what is causing your colon to be inflamed. Now again, like anything, these can be due to other reasons, some of them very serious reasons, okay? So get it checked out. But if it is because of this, if that's the diagnosis, figure out why is your colon inflamed. 10, abdominal pain kind of is self-explanatory. If you have a, a large intestine issue, you have a good chance of having abdominal pain at some point, whether it's cramping um, or diarrhea or something like that. 11, this is a little bit different one, burning pain in the feet. Now, this can happen from the kidneys too. The kidneys, for some reason, go into the feet. There's acupuncture meridians and things that go into the feet for the bladder, kidneys, and burning pain in the feet can happen from them, but it can also happen from an imbalance of bowel flora, so the good bacteria, good and bad bacteria, there should be kind of a balance in there, um, antibiotics and different things that help destroy some of the things, uh, the, you know, bowel flora balance can imbalance the flora and cause burning pain in the feet. And number 12 here, we have constipation, so even like a slow transit time, so again, going every two weeks going every other day. Every other day is not normal for anybody, right? There's, a, there's something going wrong there. Uh, once a day, minimum. So constipation. Uh, if you like this video, make a comment, give me a thumbs up. Uh, DrLarson.com is my website if you want to learn more. Always, always, always remember that the body works as a complete whole. If you have some of these things going on, make sure to get checked out by someone. Some cases are very important to get checked out by a medical doctor. If you're cleared through all their testing and protocols, that's when you gotta dig a little bit deeper, find someone who can work with you one-on-one -on -one and figure out you know, where is your body not quite working um, how it's supposed to. So again, hope you liked the video and I'll see you again on another one.